We are reading from Sri Sri Radharas Sudhaniti, continuing verse 14. The third paragraph down, maybe we'll read, read a little bit above where we left off yesterday. So this is the bottom of page 41 in the blue book. By the mercy of Sri Vrindavan, Sripad sees a sweet transcendental picture before his inner eyes. Sri Sri Lila Kishor Yugala, the playful, youthful couple, are playing Madura Vana Vihara, sweet forest pastimes. Admiring the beauty of the spring forest with their girlfriends. Shripad is there in his kinkery form, engaged in their service. The forest is filled with different kinds of blooming flowers surrounded by humming bees. The cuckoos create a romantic atmosphere by singing in the fifth note And Mohan, the young transcendental Cupid of Vrindavan, sings along with Rati Priya Swamini, Radhika, who enchants millions of Ratis, and her girlfriends and maidservants. How sweetly they play in the forest, embracing each other like a male and female elephant. The Sakis sing sweet songs about the pastimes of the Yugala Kishore, inciting amorous feelings in their hearts. Sometimes Priyaji personally goes to pick flowers to decorate her Priyatama. The vine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. They smile with their flowers, oripulate with their sprouts, and cry. What is that meaning, Mahatmaji? Tashi Rade 
Do not hey. Horripulate, you horripulate you're saying? Yeah. Is Udo you know is it like to shake? Like to tremble? <laughs> no. I'm afraid I don't know my, I don't know. I can look at it. Uh, the I'll look up in the dictionary. No. Like with a book or like on the internet? Um, how do you write it? I actually have real books here. Wow. <laughs> Those are real behind you? <laughs> it's not just wallpaper. H O R R I. H O. Or it sounds like a little bit. R R I. P I. P I. L A T E. L A T E. To make, uh, it, makes, uh, it means to make. Um, Oh no. Horripulate, it says make uh, make the hair stand up, make you horrified. Oh, give you yeah. goosebumps. Oh uh, yeah. So that makes sense with their sprouts because they're little just little pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just read it. So. <laughs> like the hair uh -huh. But also in excitement. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the so their their sprouts are standing on end. Yeah, say. goose palms or goose pimples is uh, uh, similar. But in the meaning of uh, ecstasy, not of uh, horror. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful description. Ma. How many jokes Srimati makes with her girlfriends while she picks flowers? Vishaka says. Saki Rade, be careful. A greedy bumblebee, Mohan, is coming up to you to drink the honey from your moonlight face. Srimati says, Saki, why should a bumblebee come to me? leaving behind the fragrant lotus-like faces of beautiful girls like you and your friends. You said that my face is like the moon. Well, Saki, the moon has no fragrance. So why would the bee feel attracted to it? Shripad, in his kinkery form, sees Radha Kara. Karava Chita, Karava Chita, Palava Balarike, Balarike. <laughs> How beautiful the vine buds are horripulating when they are touched by Sri Radha's beautiful hands. Through these pastimes, he relishes Vrindavan's natural beauty. Here we can uh, easily find out the difference between the Manjaris again and the uh, Sakis. Sakis, uh, 
they uh, see themselves as on the same level uh, than Radhika, and Radhika see themselves also on that level. Mm -hmm. So, no? Yeah. Yeah, that exchange would certainly that would not be quite like that between uh, Manjri and Srimati. But with her Saki, she can make more of the jokes. Why would why would the bumblebee leave me from you or come to me from leaving you? No, yeah, that's uh that's open uh discuss there. That they are both attracted. So that the Sakis are all Sakis are uh Attracted by Mohan. Mm. And uh, they know this. It is not that Radhika is now uh, somehow disturbed by this, that Mohan is also attracted to others. No, she desires this. In one of the previous Versus Sometimes she stopped the Ras she stopped her Leela with Mohan because she was thinking of her Sakis. But uh, again the Manjari is is uh is watching how good they've explained many times, no? Yeah. She Manjari is uh Through these Leelas, he rallies Vrindavan's natural beauty. Mm. But this, uh, this conversation, uh, only takes, uh, place with the Sakis. Yeah. You know, between the Sakis. Yeah. Vishaka and, and Radharani. And I love that they're actually engaged in this back and forth exchange. And then the very next line is Shripat in his kinkri form sees. So he's actually the one that is witnessing and sees is the word. Sees. Yeah. He's not the doer. He's not in Radhakun playing in the water pastimes. They're on the edge watching, witnessing what's happening. And when he's witnessing, what is the Mandri looking at? Sri Radha's beautiful hands. That's the point. And so, uh, uh, this is uh, when she watched this, what is described that the, the flowers and buds and so uh, are in ecstasy when they are directly touched by Swamini's hands. Mm -hmm. So when we see in the material world, if you cut the flowers, I don't know, they are maybe not so much... Uh, in ecstasy. <laughs> of course, remember, the first meaning of the word manjari is bud. Oh, uh, yeah. A manjari is a flower bud on a vine. So when uh, her hands are touching the manjaris, it's, uh, sorry, the buds, she's touching the manjaris and making them have this ecstasy. Yeah, beautiful, right. That brings some deeper meaning to the sentence, the vine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. That's the, actually the topmost uh, kinkery can uh, feel when it's direct touched by Swamini. Mm. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Rade, Rade. Uh, I have a question inside of me, like um, about the manjaris. Like, what is our relationship to Radharani and Krishna? Are they uh, like? all the brothers and sisters for us 
or what what is the relationship in it you want me to try <laughs> yes please <laughs> <coughs> Radha and Mohan are, are, of course, Krishna, their God. And the Manjaris are those that are, have the highest level of service to Radha. And that Radha's highest goal is to love Mohan. So that's the starting point. The purpose of life is to love God. The goal of life is Prem. And this is what is happening with the couple. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descends in order to put into, I don't know, practice, you would say, this love. And the Manjaris then are there to serve that, to help that, to make sure that love flows. That's their function. And we, the jivas, we want to go as far as we can in, in loving God, in expressing divine love, prem. And the highest and closest we can come to that is, is in the mood of the mantari. That doesn't mean we become mantris, but it means that we practice in the mood. That we adopt all the attitudes and the feelings and the humility that the mantris are showing. This is why we read about mantris all the time, so we can learn what our highest uh, kind of behavior is. So, and we are the helpers of the helpers of Radha in our in our hearts. This is our relationship. So we worship Krishna by serving Radha. Let's say. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, we try to understand the differences between the moods from the Gopi, from the Saki, and from Manjari to uh, realize our own mood. This mood is uh, uh, is given by of the Guru. Before we met, we met our guru. We didn't know really who we are in that relationship to Radha Mohan. But by his mercy, he gave everything to us and makes us understand this this fine tuning differences between the Gopi Bhav, the Saki Bhav, and the Manjari Bhav. And this makes clear our relationship. How uh, Udafji nicely explained, and in our case, it's he he makes clear good if our relationship is that of the Manjari, and uh, we have no interest actually in Mohan, even if he try to attract us. We are always fixed <laughs> on our Swamini. She is a uh, so-called Ishta Devi. And this is Gurudev's teaching that we have to understand who we are and who is our Ishta Dev or Ishta Devi. And this is uh, his mercy. By his mercy, it comes crystal clear. The gopis, for example, they have more love for for Mohan, for Krishna. The Sakis have both love for Krishna and love for Swamini. In the Manjaris, they have uh, uh, this exclusive love for Radhika. Of course, they are serving both, 
the divine couple, but they are always fixed on the lotus feet of Swamini. They are described as their shadows. And uh, they are never attracted to to the uh, divine Cupid in form of Krishna. And because of their sty bath, good is said, they are so loyal to to Radhika that she has no she is fully in trust their manjaris. They can even enter the, the Kunja to every moment to do their seva there. And this is not not possible for the Sakis or the Gopis. So it would be clear that they don't they love their their love is for their loyalty is for Radha, yes, but not as some kind of lonely queen. Their love for her is their love for her love. So their their function in all the Leelas we read is not just to hang around and worship Radha. You never see this. What they're doing all the time is helping Radha to realize her desire, which is to be with Mohan. So yes, they're yeah. they're completely a hundred percent loyal to Radha, but in one in you know, Radha's goal to love. So that you could say that Radha's love is actually the highest. Does it answer Harina? Mm, yes, it's really beautiful. Like, still, like, um, inside of me, like, I try to understand, like, how is it, like, in Vrindavan, like, um, as a manjari, then, that um, how do I approach them? Like, in the serving mood, just, or also, yeah, this is, this is, like, uh, the question. Yeah, serving mood, always serving, because the rasa of the manjari is seva rasa. We, the enjoyment of the manjari is the service. They never well, the enjoy, is that, no, right? There's not, a, there's not a particular service. It's just the mood which is the goal. You can look actually at this. This commentary, it's really a good example because Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is a, is a sadhika like you and me. He's a very, very high and advanced one, but he's sadhika, he's in his material body. He's, he's meditating and writing this, this prayer. And he says, and he talks to his mind. In the in the in the verse, he says, "Dear mind, let me find the pleasure in the play forest." And then, in his mind, he meditates, just like you sit there and meditate in your mind. And he meditates on Vrindavan, Vrindavan Dham, on the on transcendent, transcendental Vrindavan. And because he's a very advanced devotee, he has a crystal clear image of what is going on there, of these pastimes. And then again, in the like in the second paragraph, where we started today, actually, it says, a sweet transcendental picture comes before his inner eyes, comes into his mind. So the most highest devotees are those who create in their minds this transcendental picture, and then it becomes real for them. And it comes real for them by being in this mood of serving. The more we purify our mood, the more we become, like Gaura says, 
ourselves, <laughs> knowing who we are, the more we see clearly in our meditation this pastime. So somebody like Gurudev closed his eyes and he's transported in his mind directly there. <laughs> So the goal of our practice is to find this Manjari Bhav, this Manjari Mood. Thank you so much. I feel like this line here maybe can be some confirmation to what we were asking about yesterday, Goro, with the previous line. The line on the previous page just says, the forest is filled with different kinds of blooming flowers surrounded by hummingbees. I have one, I, I, I have to, this is a, I cannot uh, agree with, with, uh, with the conclusion of Udova. I'm so sorry. Because that would would uh, meaning that with the the mind, if we create it by ourselves, Udavji, then it's also finished when we leave in body. Because then the mind is damaged. This is a uh, finish. But this is mercy. This is really for me what I realize. This view of Rindavan is Swamini's mercy. These pictures coming, they are not created by the mind. And we meditate and fix on the point, but the pictures are the mercy of Swamini. So in this point, I cannot agree with this, that this, uh, 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 something doing by the mind. And I, I practice this intensely. I'm really sorry. I don't like this and I don't like to, uh, to do this discussion is only what, what my experience, I, I like to share this because it's, uh, what Gurudev explained, it's a eternal relationship. And it, if it is, uh, 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 made, made by the mind, by intense meditation of the mind, and it's coming only by the mind, then there is no meaning of mercy. And I can concentrate my mind on something and it will come and uh, appear before me. No, this appearance is really Swamini's mercy that she accept Sripad as her manjari. And then these pictures are coming by mercy and these are not seen before. No mind can uh, create something that that he never experienced before pictures like that of a bot what is getting goose pimples when it's picked up. This is not a picture from this world. This mainly these experiences in what, what is described in these books are not made in this material world. This is a complete, uh, opening from the spiritual world. So, um, this is for me, and I also think it's uh, from Gurudev's side. This is really made by mercy. The, all these pictures come when Swamini accept us as a manjari. Gurudev make uh, a seed into our heart. You are right in this, that we are growing and meditating on the feelings of a manjari. And when we enter, and our prayers is, our prayer is, please give me this view, give me this seva, 
and then it's an act of mercy that this will come the 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 seva and this view of these pictures they are not made by the mind mind is finished when you're dead but the relationship to swamini is never finished also not to gurudev gurudev's relationship is is eternal also it's over it's it's when the mind is leaving us we forget everything it's a the brain is That's very nice. I guess I wasn't clear. I I didn't uh, I didn't uh, say that the images are created by the mind. I just read what Ananda Das Babaji said that the images come into his mind. I didn't say where uh, they come from. Aha, aha. So this is a misunderstand from my side. Sorry, Ananda. Maybe Mahatmaji, you continue. Yeah. She got him. How beautiful the vine buds are horripulating when they are touched by Sri Radha's beautiful hands. Through these pastimes, he relishes Vrindavan's natural beauty. Sometimes, Srimati wants to pick flowers from high branches, and Sham, seeing her stretched out armpit, becomes attracted to her and runs up to her. Spamini cannot reach the flowers she wants. So Sham helps her by pulling the branch down. Just as Swamini catches the flower, Sham lets go of the branch so that tender Radhika flies up along with the branch. Fearfully, she calls out, Lalita, Lalita, help! while Sham loudly laughs and claps his hands. Lalita pulls the branch back down and takes care that Spamini returns to the ground. In his kinkari form, Sripad sees how beautiful Sri Radha's footprints have marked the earth of Vrindavan. Radha Padanka Vilasan Madura Stalike. After picking flowers, Srimati sits down on a jeweled platform and makes ornaments from different flowers. <coughs> 
with her own hands to decorate Shamasundra with. Shamasundra and the Sakis are overwhelmed with ecstasy when the birds begin to chirp of Srimati's glories. Radha Yaso Mukara Mata Kavalike. When the transcendental vision vanishes, Shripat thinks Radha Vihara Vivini Ram Atam Mano Me. O oh mind, find pleasure in Radha's play forest. If I cannot directly experience Radha and Mohan's loving pastimes, then let me remember Sri Vrindavan and mentally witness these sweet nectarian pastimes. This ends verse 14. Yeah, one one small thing is uh, because of the question of uh, I know I remember when when in the beginning of of uh, Gurudev's explanations. I think it's normal to to think about this. What what feelings are for me there? Because uh, we have a, a material. Uh, we start with the material, and uh, yeah, I mean this uh, when uh, when a man and a woman comes together, there is a, a this is the highest uh, feeling maybe in the material world, and. Uh, what is there? Uh, what is left for the manjari then? <laughs> there is the sakis. I have some enjoyment with Mohan, <laughs> Radhika. <laughs> but uh, uh, from this point of view, the manjari is uh, is not the highest, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's what awesome, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> only, only watching this. Uh, mm, okay. <laughs> but this is uh, uh, really the point of uh, uh, from the material eyes. <laughs> Only seva. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but then, after all, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this is in the beginning. We think like this, and I can feel this also now. <laughs> I remember this. Yes, but that's the difference between the material body and the spiritual body. The enjoyment in the spiritual body is completely different. The mind and senses are uh, are completely different. So this enjoyment from the material senses is uh, in the spiritual senses are completely different. The spiritual senses are not made 
for this kind of enjoyment we have in the material body. The spiritual senses are really made for this seva and they get this most intense bliss when they feel that they are used in the service. Like this buts, what we just read. The wine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. They smile with their flowers, horripilate with their sprouts, and cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. So this is, uh, how would I explain? This is, uh, really the, this is the mood of the uh, Manjaris. It's so beautiful. But, okay. This is in, uh, Suniti also. We just shared this question again and, uh, it's, uh, yes. It, it, yes. What you said, Suniti? It's a human feeling. But in, also. Human feeling. You 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 can hear her. Uh, no, we can't hear her. A little louder. It's about gold and iron, huh? It's different qualities. Uh -huh. like gold and iron. Yeah. That's different qualities. Hmm. Prema and lust. It's like gold and iron. Uh -huh. It's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yes, it's like. Uh, a gold and iron and frame and lust. There is a, a great difference. Mm, mm. Okay. Like what I understand is the highest is the union of Radha and Krishna and that we support it. But through that, like we as Manjari, we are so connected to Radha. And that's why we feel everything what she feels. And also feeling the union between them then. Yeah, but the point is not our enjoyment of this. Yes, but the point is not our enjoyment of this. But we are uh, the fulfillment of our desires is uh, that we brought them together and uh, we can see when we decorate our Swamini and Mohan is uh, very happy with this, then our Sevaras is, uh, is 100%. Mm -hmm. This is not that we neglect uh, Mohan. But uh, we we will never accept his uh, his touch or whatever. We are only yeah. in the service mood to Radhika, and this is indirectly we serve also at this point to Mohan. Mm -hmm. The Mandres are in the mood of Mahavalas Rati. So I'm, when you're happy, I'm happy. Mm. And so my goal is to make you happy because when you're happy, then I'm happy. And I think we can get teeny tiny glimpses of this in the material world here and there. If you've ever like bought a gift for a, a good friend, like someone that's really close to you and you're so excited to give it to them. You know, because you know, it's like, it's what they really want, you know, for their birthday or something like that. Like they've talked to you a lot about this, whatever it is, they, they really wanted this new pair of shoes, but you knew that they weren't going to get it, but you have the ability to go and get it. So you can go and support them. And when you give it to them, you give them that gift, it feels like it feels nice inside. You're like, wow, this, this feels good. Even though I'm not going to be wearing the shoes, I'm not the one that's actually relishing, enjoying the shoes. I'm enjoying that you're enjoying the shoes. 
then this is the this is the mood of the mood of the mandri. Obviously, on a, on a very material level, but mm -hmm. this is like mm -hmm. maybe a small glimpse into the the attitude, the approach that the mandri takes into into her service. <clears throat> So all the feelings and the relishment are all there. It's just we the mandri gets there in a different way. I love this final prayer from Sripad because I feel that he's giving mercy to devotees on all levels by saying, oh mind, find pleasure in Radha's play forest. If I cannot directly experience Radha and Mohan's loving pastime, so even though the text just describes he was actively there and um, supporting their loving pastime. If I cannot directly experience, then let me remember Sri Vrindavan. And to me, I feel that when he says, let me remember Sri Vrindavan, it means let me live in these loving service mood feelings of the mandri. Mm -hmm. So let me be in my everyday life actively living in these feelings of the mandri working to serve in this loving mood mm -hmm. when you're happy i'm happy mm -hmm. Can I yeah. yeah i'm really grateful for all your point of views and like sharings like yeah because like vrindavan right now is like a very strong mirror to me and yeah i i strongly can observe like myself like longing also for this enjoyment or like these parts of me that are so calculating and like always try to gain the best for me and yeah sometimes also yeah sure there's also compassion but yeah I can observe so many layers of myself right now, like how I interact and interacted with the world. And but yeah, I'm, I'm just grateful for, for your sharings and point of views because it gives me a deeper feeling and understanding for this. The reality is that we're we live in the material world. That we're we're in subtle energy, you know, we're we're souls living in material bodies. And our soul experience is experience of the divine, though most of it for most of us it's ninety percent covered. And the the way we interact with the world, like you were saying, Arinam. Prasad is, is through our material bodies, through our mind, through our material senses. But our essence is the soul. And the soul is what will eventually leave this body and either travel to an ex another body or end up permanently in Goloka, Goloka Vrindavan doing eternal service this is our spiritual goal and this will happen when we if we manage if and when both <laughs> when we manage to see through realize how much of what we do in this world is materially determined and we find our way back to realizing that we're soul beings, that we're souls. And that if this work is done, then when we leave the body, 
we will not take a new body. We'll end up in the eternal lila. And if we don't finish this work, then we'll continue the work in the next body. So we try to, the mind is like a kind of a bridge between the soul and this crazy material world. We have to use it in a way. And at the same time, we want to purify ourselves of it. The soul gives us inspiration, it gives us a reference point for our spiritual progress, it gives us a reference point for our, our relation to Radha. We're all souls, and that soul is divine. So how to live in this material world with a divine soul, that is the sort of paradox that we all face. Radhe Radhe, good morning. Radhe. I would like to ask something uh, about what you said about returning to the spiritual world. Actually, um, I heard that for this, it's necessary that all the karma is somehow, I don't know how to say it, but. like our karma is finished or kind of resolved and only then we will be able to take the spiritual body and really go back and um so i don't know what that means and how is it possible it sounds very oh my god <laughs> overwhelming maybe somebody could explain something about that yeah I Rade, Rade. I just remember what the Jananda Maharaj said. The karma is under trigona. And then if you can how say beyond the trigona, the karma is no more how to say no more to say the means end. Our karma is still there, but if you become going to the beyond the karma, then it's no need to to consider or related to the karmas. I just remember that the Janadam has just explained about I also did a, this kind of question and then he said that na de na de. Karma is all the all the the it's the baggage it's the traces of our material experience which keep us from finding our swarup, realizing our swarup, our soul. When we realize fully our swarup, like who we are, like to use the words of Garasundra there, very nicely put, then karma is gone. And like Prabhupada said, this can happen in 60 seconds. It doesn't, the moment you have this realization, then the karma is gone and you're no longer bound to the material body. 
It can take 60 seconds or 60 years or 60 million years. And like Gurudev says, it's, and like Gaurasundar says, it's, it's not because of material actions we do so much as, as mercy. So remember, karma actually in the Sanskrit it means a cause or the law of cause and effect. And mercy is the one great power of the universe which doesn't obey cause and effect. There's no cause. There's no much there. You can't uh, serve a breakfast to the poor in Vrindavan enough times in order to guarantee that you get your realization. It will come when it comes. We can make it, we can do many things in the material world in order to open the, prepare the road, you know, prepare the way. Be in the right place, associate, do kirtan, above all, uh, study under a spiritual master. But it will come at the moment of mercy. So karma is all these attachments which, which, from the material activities that block us. But these are nothing compared to the power of mercy, which wipes it away in one moment, one one blink of the eye. That's so beautiful, and it's not only Buddhaji that our karma when we become a pure devotee. Krishna described in Bhagavad Gita, he will not only liberate us, he will liberate 14 generations <laughs> before us and 14 generations that are coming in the future from our families. So, this is uh, one thing I meditate many times of this. This is, this life we, I not only have the responsibility to myself to finish this, all these karmic reactions by becoming, try to become a devotee. And, uh, but it's also that my, can you imagine 14 generations? How many people, how many souls he will give mercy when we become pure devotee? So Prabhupada many times said, become devotee. He prayed for every single soul. Don't live like dogs and what he said, pigs <laughs> like this. Become devotee. Many times he said to his disciples, please become devotee because he knows this. That it's not only this one person who is sitting there. There is sitting the whole family. And please count 14 generations. There are maybe hundred thousands of people. If we become a devotee, we realize our own spiritual body and the, uh, the relationship to Mohan or to Swamini. We will liberate so many people. And uh, this is our responsibility in this life. So we have to be uh, under this uh, uh, Vandana. You will liberate your whole family. Can you imagine? Even if they are not uh, uh, devotee or whatever, there is no, uh, no border for, for Mohan. Krishna is, is, I mean, he is the. He is the one who can say this, and whatever he say, it will become true. Your mother, your father, your grandfathers, your grandmothers, grand grandmothers, grand grandfathers, and you, everything in your family will become liberated. Fourteen generations, so. We work on this with our full heart and attention. This life can be successful. We, we are able by the mercy of Gurudev to become devotee. It's a 
Yeah. Yeah. So it would help if I could please get some grandchildren, I think. <laughs> yeah. this, uh, this meditation has been certainly in the forefront of my mind. Uh, as Vrindavan, as it does, um, kind of showed me some of my karmic energies that have been passed to me from my parents and grandparents and I don't know, probably many, many generations back. And then I also at the same time have my child that is, you know, coming into the world in maybe hours or days or not hours, but, <laughs> you know, certainly soon. And, um, and, and my desire to, you know, sometimes we feel these, these karmic energies that come up inside us and they're like, they're not so nice. At least the ones that I have are certainly not loving service mood. You know? And so this desire is there to, um, to not pass this on, you know, because like we, we love every, everyone around us and, and particularly have a strong attachment to our, our material family. And I mean, we can, we can see this even, even with Guru Dave, like he's in Delhi right now, taking care of his material family. He's always taking care of us, his spiritual family, and also his material family. And so for reasons that we, at least that I can't see, we are linked to these souls for one reason or another. And so we have this attachment to our family for reasons that at least I can't see. And, and the, the thought, the concept of being able to, to purify not only ourselves and liberate ourselves, but also our, our family members is like, I mean, to me, very, very inspiring and, and worth, as you say, Gora, you know, like committing this life to that and, and I also, um, I love Uda, your description about how, about how karma basically creating these, these bondages, these material coverings that are, that are blocking us from experiencing our soul. And I remember actually a, uh, it's a tea bag, you know, there's like a brand of tea in America called Yogi tea. Maybe it's in other places and they always have these like little yogic phrases on them and everything. And one I got one day that says an act of love leaves no trace and so to me what i what i felt on that tea bag was they're talking about our karmic actions right so there's good karma and there's bad karma and we you can live both our both our coverings both our attachments if i do something good i can build good karma if that's my intention if i do something bad I potentially put this other karma on me you know there's maybe no good and bad but there's karma that's going on but when we do the action in a loving mood particularly in a loving service mood then this action instead of adding to our karma instead of bonding us to this world it's actually freeing us from this world why because when we do these actions in this loving service mood we are in the mood of our spiritual form so we're living more we're developing more connection to this mandri bhav to the spiritual form and this is freeing us from these bonds of of karma as buddha said through mercy and is also not building more karma so that over time you know, it could be as was beautifully described, could be 60 seconds, could be 60 years, could be 60 million years. But over time, these actions will work towards kind of removing those instead of adding them. But it's a it's how we approach the action. It's not the action itself that we do. Um, it's how we feel our mood that we take when we're engaging in the action. And uh, it's also that to understand that also all actions we do in this world in the with the material mind will create uh, karma, good or bad, and 
both sides of the karma will uh, let us stay in this matter. So really the way out is not to do good or bad, whatever, but what we do as a servant. So as a devotee. So not means not to do that for me, but for our Swamini, whatever we do. So that uh, from the moralistic side, we can say it's good or bad. But as long as we are doing this in the mood of a servant, then is uh, no meaning of some karmic reaction. And uh, there is also, um, when uh, Krishna explained in the Bhagavad Gita, that even the from the material side, but uh, Udav Ji, you know Bhagavad Gita much better than me. He said that even the, uh, the, the, the größte Schulke, uh, muss als ein Gottgeweihter angesehen werden, wenn er es in meinem Dienst tut. Sein, mm. uh, you remember this? Yeah, even the lowest act can be an, an act of, let's say, um, loosely, purification if it's in service of God. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a bit what you're saying, and it's what uh, Mahatma Ji is saying too, that uh, if we do it in a mood of service to Radha, it could be just about anything, the actual action. It's, it's the mood. It's done in service. This is what's special about bhakti. That's any service that's done for Radha is liberating. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also Gurudev explained sometimes when uh, there is no sin. The only sin is to forget Radha Mohan. This is uh, when we are in the material uh, uh, Maya under this control. Then uh, we, she tried to make us forget Radha Mohan, and we are in this kind of uh, illusion, and we allow this somehow that we will forget Radha Mohan and this is actually the sin that we are not remember Radha Mohan and what we just read the beauty of the Vrindavan forest the playtime there and that moment we remember we are on the right position mm. Gurudev, good morning Oh. So nice to see you. All good in, in Delhi? No voice good. Eh? Waiting yeah. and watching. Huh? Yeah. Waiting and watching. <laughs> Nothing is clear. Yeah. Vandana just made a nice question about karma. And we just speak about this meaning of karma. And when will the karma end? And uh, we explain this, what we learned from you, Gurudev. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that there is a, a great mercy when we become devotee. Yeah. And uh, that not only our karma will end if we become devotee, but Krishna in Bhagavad Gita told Arjuna that he will liberate even 14 generations before and 14 generations in the future if one becomes right. a devotee. Huh? Right, right. So we have a big responsibility to our family to become a devotee, right? Mm. So what we see, devotee has also trouble and this and that. Then they think that why devotee has a trouble problem? <laughs> so devotees are not a good position. I need my life without pain. <laughs> but devotees, painful life is also not giving pain to them. They think this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the chance to serve, mm. the field for service, and we will serve with a selfless mood. Yeah. Yeah. One time Gurudev said to me, one is his, his calm karma, one is a calm karma. Mm. If I think to good result for my karma is also very dangerous. If I take the good result of my karma, then this karma will not leave us. Is your mind? The cycle is your electric one? The, the electric cycle. Yes, the blue one? Yeah. yeah. You have the key inside. Okay. You can take Yeah, it will. Uh, it will. Uh, the the result will that we are still in the material world. Yeah. So calm karma and is calm karma means good karma and bad karma. Still, we are running for karma. <laughs> But becoming devotee, then is finished this, both. That is the point, that is the point, huh? Devotion is not for doing for myself, doing for you, yeah. For not my thinking is behind that. And we have to careful that we not involve in that. Sri mm. Radha. Mm. Yeah. Please so, read. So it means, Gurudev, that we only want our actions to be based out of loving service. Selfless service. Selfless service, yeah. Service yes, like without any result. Yeah. And in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, Krishna told him uh, to fight. So in the, uh, uh, in our understanding here in the, um, in the material, that's not good to kill others, right? Good. Yeah. Ah, so just, yeah, you know, that's yes. Okay. Very good. <laughs> we can see Guru Dip now. But in this understanding of service, it also 
could be uh, possible that this is our service. And right. Krishna explained this to Arjuna, right? Right. So it, it, it's possible that it's from a moralic or ethic, uh, worldly standard, it's not, not a, a good thing. Mm. But even it's possible that it's, uh, uh, it's a service, then it's okay. Right. Read, read. Witness. We finished the verse today, but we can start a new one or go back and read what we read. Read the last, last, last bit. Mm. Maybe we'll go. We had some feelings about this description here. By the mercy of Sri Vrindavan, Sri Pad sees a sweet transcendental picture before his inner eyes. Shri <clears throat> Shri Shri Lila Kisho Yugala, the playful, youthful couple are playing Madhura Vana Vihar. Mm -hmm. Sweet forest pastimes. Admiring the beauty of the spring forest with their girlfriends. Shripad is there in his King Curry form, engaged in their service. The forest is filled with different kinds of blooming flowers surrounded by hummingbees. Wow. The cuckoos create a romantic atmosphere by singing in the fifth note. Wow. <clears throat> And Mohan, the young transcendental Cupid of Vrindavan, sings along with Rati Priya Swamini, Radhika, who enchants millions of Ratis, and her girlfriends and maidservants. All sing together. Mm. How sweetly they play in the forest, embracing each other like a male and female elephant. The Sakis sing sweet songs about the pastimes of the Yugala Kishore, inciting amorous feelings in their hearts. Sometimes Priyaji personally goes to pick flowers to decorate her Priyatama. The vine blood, the vine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. 
They smile with their flowers. Oripulate with their sprouts. And cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. How many jokes Srimati makes with her girlfriends while she picks flowers. Here we made a point, Gurudev, that uh, when the wine buds bloom up, when they are touched by Swamini's hands. Wow, yeah. And uh, they smile with their flowers. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Hori Pillade, in the beginning, we didn't know what is the meaning, but it is similar to they get goose pimples uh, with their sprouts uh, and cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. Wow. It's such a beautiful picture. The vine, the vine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. They smile with their flowers, horripulate, which means stand on end with ecstasy or in ecstasy with their sprouts and cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. Wow. Wow. Very nicely explained. And uh, Mahaprabhu Mahasi. Yeah. Words are something, meaning is something. Mm. This is also, I think, would have to make this point of uh, that. Uh, this is like a uh, feeling also of the manjaris. Yeah. When they are touched by Swamini's hands. Yeah. That the mercy, when the touch of Swami hand, Manjri is that dancing and we happy. Wow. And then all creation Manjri come up. <laughs> How many jokes Srimati makes with her girlfriends while she picks flowers? Vishaka says, Saki Rade. Be careful. A greedy bumblebee, Mohan, is coming up to you to drink the honey from 
your moonlight face. Srimati says, Saki, why should a bumblebee come to me, leaving behind the fragrant lotus-like faces of beautiful girls like you and your friends? This line, I feel, references the line we read earlier <clears throat> about the forest being filled with different kinds of blooming flowers. I was feeling, Gurdiv, yesterday that the blooming flowers were, the different kinds of blooming flowers are different sakis. There are different gopis mm -hmm. surrounded by hummingbees, like the rasa dance. Well, yeah, hard folks. You say that my face is like the moon. Yeah. Well, Saki, yeah. the moon yeah. has no fragrance. Yeah. Yeah. So, why would the bee? feel attracted to it. Uh, 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 Sripad, uh, uh, in his uh, kink form, uh, sees Radha Parava Chitta uh, Alava Baladike Baladike uh, How beautiful the vine buds are horripulating when they are touched by Sri Radha's beautiful hands. Uh, uh, Through these pastimes, uh, he relishes uh, Vrindavan's natural beauty. Uh, 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 yes, you can read sometimes. Srimati wants to pick flowers from high branches and Sham, seeing her stretched out armpit, becomes attracted to her and runs up to her. Spamini cannot reach the flowers she wants. So Sham helps her 
by pulling the branch down just as Swamini catches the flower, Sham lets go of the branch so that tender Radhika flies up along with the branch. Fearfully, she calls out, Lalita, Lalita, help! While Sham loudly laughs and claps in his hands, Lalita pulls uh, the back down uh, and takes care uh, that Swamini returns to the ground. Uh, In his kinkari form, Sripad sees how beautiful Sri Radha's footprints have marked earth of Vrindavan. Uh, uh, Radha, Padanka, uh, and Madura, Sadak, uh, Alike. Uh, 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 After picking flowers, uh, Srimati sits down uh, on a jeweled platform uh, uh, and makes ornaments. Uh, uh, from different flowers with her own hands uh, to decorate Shamsundra with. Uh, uh, Shamsundra. So we can see that uh, Swamini is not unhappy uh, about the jokes uh, Mohan makes with these branches. So she is also in this playful mood and she loves this very much. And her girlfriend's helping to bring the branch down so that she can stand on the ground again. It's also a very nice picture to see this, huh? When mm. she's picking flowers and how playful they are. So they are so close and so loving and so playful. This is Vrindavan and there are so many involved in this, uh, in this beautiful playing game. There are the tree, the flower. There is, uh, who is it? Lalite. And there is the Manjari who is seeing this, watching the scene. Rata, Mohan, all are in this. <clears throat> now they are all in this uh, beautiful, playful mood, and how much fun they have together there. Oh. Oh. Especially Mohan, he's jumping there and uh, clap. What is it? Clapping the hands. Mm -hmm. Laughs loudly and claps his hands. <laughs> It's a beautiful scene to remember. That will never happen in Dwaraka or somewhere else in Vaikuntha. You will not see this. The God who is clapping hand and loudly oh. laughing. Oh. This is only possible in the forest of Vrindavan. Really beautiful. Yes. It also shows us maybe how um, soft oh. and delicate Swamini is because she's getting lifted up entirely on, into the branch 
that Sham pulls down. And not only Sham pulls down, but also Lalita can pull it back down. But our Swamini gets fully lifted up with it when she gets, as when Sham releases it. After picking flowers, Trimati sits down on the jewel platform and makes ornaments and different flowers with her own hands to decorate Shamsundra with. Shamsundra and the Sakis are overwhelmed with ecstasy when the birds begin to chirp of Srimati's glories. Radha Yaso Mukara Mata Kagal Kagavalake. When the transcendental vision vanishes, Sripad thinks Radha Vihar Vipini Ramatam Mano Me. O oh mind, find pleasure in Radha's play for us. If I cannot directly experience Radha and Mohan's loving pastimes, then let me remember Sri Vrindavan and mentally witness these sweet nectarian pastimes. Thus ends verse 14. It's so nice to sit around Gurudev's bed and watching his ecstasy. Like if we all sit in Vrindavan around his bed. All right. We very desire to be with you, Gurudev. Yeah, you're coming soon, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> Missing you very much. What to do, my dear? Mm. <laughs> So cold here, yeah? three degrees. Cold? Very cold. Oh mm -hmm. my God. You have no yeah. heater there? Heater, but it's not working very good. Oh. Heater not work so cold is here. Yeah? I will room with the heater, but... <laughs> not enough. <laughs> now sun is start coming from yesterday, but very cool, very cold what there. Yeah. We also here, we have very cold, but we have heater, so, uh, but outside it's so cold that uh, the, the gasoline is freezing in the tank of the cars. No. Wow. <laughs> That's oh very cold, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, since since one week we have around uh, more than five degree less, as a minus ten degree. We had three degree was there. How much? Three. three. 
in the daily. That's too cold, Gurudev. My God. And you have not a good heating system. And, uh, and my hand is not good also to protect this. Very difficult. <laughs> Okay, no, this is not this is not not good circumstances. So I will bring a heater, good for you. Okay. No, one more yeah. is better. Okay. Then we meet in 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 daily, huh? You will still be yeah. there. I don't know what will happen. I'm praying uh, to go soon to Vrindavan. Yeah. But I'm stuck there. Yeah, yeah. Aapka intajar kar rahe hain Brindavan mein? Yes. Kaun? Govardhan Daridas. Oh, Jai Sri Radha, Jai Krishna. Jai Sri Radha, Guru Dev. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. You too. Everything is mercy. Everything happened in Brindavan. Everything is mercy. But what is your flight? My flight is Wednesday, 11. Day after yeah. tomorrow. Oh. And we will leave Brindavan maybe 12 o'clock in the time, Sam. Okay. Yeah, yeah I will call you later. Detail. Okay. Thank you for your kindness. Please take care of yourself also. Oh, yeah. We wish all you, your family's best. Good day. Oh, that's good. What Radha Radhi wants to what I can do with that. Radha Mohan, what they will do is the best. Mm. I have that thing. My mind for this. <clears throat> so, this is difficult times. We can learn many things to serve her, to understand. Mm -hmm. I'm very sad to study this. Jai Gurudev. We are with you there. Jai Gurudev. 
Thank you for Darshan Gurudev. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My God. So sweet. What an incredible lesson. I think my life, my life circumstances are like, oh, it's difficult. You know, I'm like not set up. Like my life's not set up for Bhajan and like Gurudev is the perfect and such a shining beacon of light and example for us that like regardless of your circumstances this was what i was feeling kind of about your question vandana with with the karma is like we didn't create our life circumstances the creator did and by thinking that we're creating them and oh this this isn't i'm not in an ideal circumstance for service for bhajan we're actually taking the mood of the creator instead of the mood of the absolute truth and so whatever circumstance we're in here has been created for us to serve our only we don't need to change our circumstances this is the beauty of i feel Gurudev's teaching is we don't need to change our external circumstances we don't need to you know move to a cave in vrindavan and chant chant three lakhs a day you know we live in our in our mood in our every or we live in our same circumstances our everyday life we just live in those same circumstances in our loving service mood.